The Inferno, certainly underdogs coming into this one with their two and four record. Yeah, it feels like they're the ones who have a lot to prove to try and, you know, put themselves in a, you know, okay spot, you know, at the end of the season, you know, just making sure you can check off a big dub against a five and one opponent. You'd feel good regardless if you don't make the postseason. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, just highlight some UH rosters as well while we're at it. Just, man, these... The, the fact that they're five and one, as we mentioned, with the Lobos in their division, with Texas A&M, who even casting in the fall semester, that was a big team that I was looking at. Like, watch A&M continue to build over these next few semesters, and they're going to be one of those teams we talk about in NECC as the, one of the top tier. Yeah, real, real up and comer. Uh, if there was anybody I would be keeping an eye on. I mean, eyes always drawn to the tank roll to start things off, particularly in this meta. Sky, we'll, we'll have we'll have a bit. Uh, we'll have been on their soldiers here as we get into this matchup. From the other side, I mean, one thing I wanted to mention is ASU really shook up their roster. The, the Inferno roster had a lot of changes coming into this season. Uh, I think only three players stuck around. About that, and it will be Li Zhang Tower. Uh, this is actually very straightforward. Straightforward map we've seen all day long. Uh, yep. Let's go back to a little, little tried and true. That is Li Zhong. Maybe we see some Malga, possibly. I mean, we talked about how uh, we've been seeing that in APAC and a lot of different situations so far. That Malga just feels incredibly strong. That was the thing. When I saw those changes come in, I looked at it and I was like, huh, I think think Malga is going to be strong, but then I saw the Ramatra changes and I'm like, dang, Ramatra was already strong and they just buffed him even more. So I wasn't exactly sure how that was going to play out. They buffed his Vortex. Which right. I think was, it, it's still insane. Like they buffed it by like 40% damage. It's kind of crazy. Sure, sure. Because getting an anti onto a hero like that is absolutely pivotal in limiting the effectiveness a Malga can have. Yeah, yeah, Maga's entire kit is based around him being able to self-sustain with heals. Like that's the yep. entire kit as Maga heals himself. The moment you take that away, Maga is extremely vulnerable. Looks like we finally got all of our players in. We appreciate your patience. We had to uh, give our players a, a few extra minutes getting situated. We're finally ready. Get into our first map of this final series of the night. ASU Inferno taking on University of Houston Premier. Very excited to see what these teams are going to roll out on. As we mentioned, this patch just came out on Tuesday, so teams have not had much time to practice, you know, different kinds of compositions and change-ups. It looks like as we're sitting, Inferno has, you know, I mean, Ramacho was strong to begin with. As we mentioned, he got like a nice quality of life change, so it makes sense why he's still going to be a very popular pick, and UH is going to just go ahead and take that duel. The one thing I'm curious is, this is pretty much a mirror, except we got Skowalfi on the Cassidy versus Zona on that Sojourn, so we got more consistent damage from the Cassidy versus the insta shot you have with the rail from Zona. Inferno are gonna grab early positioning down here, but you feel very vulnerable. There's not a lot of cover outside of just the center pillar in the middle. As such, Greetings is going to go in, run right past Nova, start punching through to the back line. Look at Razusa will get it. Skyfi, actually, the one that comes up with that. Woo, Nova. Nice little pair of punches. But it's that advantageous high ground that serves Houston so well, and it's enough to at least give a one player advantage in this fight. Still have a couple players to clean up, but Houston have control of the objective. There's those cleanup kills. Skowalfa and Foofy on this Lucia Cassidy combination have just been doing a great job. Skowalfa is able to just stay on these flanks and take these angles and constantly keep pressure with consistent damage. While Foofy is just going around and booping people out of position and being like an assassin Lucio at this point. Got you. Double check that name. It's like Skowalf. I was butchering that. I am so sorry. Zona from the outside, here's that pulse bomb. Demi not only finds the kill on to Zona, but finds no limit as well. So Inferno, as soon as they turn the corner, they lose two and the fight's done. <laughs> the, the funny part is it's always felt like, I don't know if you've ever agreed with me, Jeff, but in I'd say in most scenarios, Tracer's been pretty like 
meta safe. Like, Tracer's been good in most metas, and I just love to see great Chaser play, and Demi's already showing out, making crazy plays for UH. A bit of a retreat here. Houston didn't want to hold the door. They decided to back up. I let Inferno burn some cooldowns on the approach. Give me a full lessons from both of our squads. With the Romatras caught right in the middle. Early South Bay are here for Fuvi. The Inferno don't have it. Are they going to be able to survive? No, Demi. Using those expert tracer skills to find the Mora in the back. Annihilation now out here from greetings. I mean, well well played. I mean, it was a extremely, extremely costly fight for the side of UH. They threw in four ults. I mean, the one consolation you get is you also got Inferno to throw in three of their own ults. So really, you're facing down Demi, trying to go up against Zona and No Limit with the ults in this fight. We saw what Demi did last with their, with their previous Pulse Bomb. There you go. They do it again. And able to get enough damage on to Nolas with Pulse Bomb actually gets the final blow. Inferno are going to use their, uh, their Sound Barrier Force 2 without their tank. 4v4 on this point as the overclock from Zoana fades. Sliding up out of there. Grab control of the objective. Very important flip there from Zoana, but stays around in that position too long. Greetings comes over and beats him down with the Nemesis form. Eyes turn on to Zeusa. Fade already is no cooldowns, no chance of survival. And Houston are firmly in control of this objective. Some stragglers coming in. How quickly can Houston deal with them? Is there a chance for Inferno to get back? Pride and Limit are both gone. Yeah, I mean, it just f seems futile as, you know, the players are coming back to touch the point, but that is going to be it. UH Premier is going to take this first point, and I don't know about you, Bullskunk, but I am actually digging this Cassidy a lot. Puts a lot of pressure onto the enemy Tracer, and has just been a beacon of consistent damage, and the High Noon, the one he, they were able to get off, it just completely zoned everyone away and allowed UH to clean up the fight. Yeah. Uh, I can I can hear Hex speaking in the back of my brain. Uh, the OWCS former Oral Owlcaster talking about how a zoning Deadeye is a very real and useful thing. Like, we've memed on it for all these years, and now a zoning Deadeye is actually truly very powerful. Uh, yeah. That's what we saw there. I mean, it's because that positioning is so important. Once you get that space control, it's so difficult for the Inferno to take it back. Yeah, it's, it's like we were talking about earlier. Positioning with these new balance changes is so important, and the High Noon just forces that out of the enemy team. Inferno, they speed in, using their uh, little, bit, little bit of Lucio advantage. I mean, both teams have Lucio, but it felt like Inferno got here lightning fast. Still, Houston find the first kill. Despite being trapped in the T room, Yeet are able to lash out five Zoetta. Nova pops in, looking for something in the corner. Nice move there from No Limit. Squalif is off the side. Oh, Dino Lobster comes in. A little scratchy scratch on Nova. Yeah, I mean, you do get a nice little 8 or 9%, maybe even 10, that you're going to steal for Inferno. So that's going to be good because uh, then UH this whole entire time hasn't been capping the point and getting this big lead. So that's going to be feeling pretty good as... Uh, the, 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 again, this Tracer duel is going to be pivotal. If Pride can take this fight against Demi and get the win, it puts them in such a good position. I'm a bit advocate of using my Blink second in a Tracer duel. Look at right from the outside. Demi gets the stick. That's another one. Demi is three for three with pulse, pulse, pulse bombs in this map. I mean, just lights out good on the Tracer. I was about to ask that. Like, he's got to be 100% stick rate at this point. Like, just absolutely insane. Finding players time and time again. It, it, to me, it seems like Demi is the big play player. When you need a big play and a big moment to happen, he's there. While Skowalfi is just that consistent, ironclad DPS player. And maybe three for four in total, but darn good. Anyway, you slice him. Here's one of those zoning dead eyes again. Oh, Pride peaked at just the wrong moment. Zoeta has to just stick it a high. They only had a speck of health. Coalescence on the front line. Oh, turn around and top off your Cassidy. Meanwhile, Annihilation out from both of our teams, as a matter of fact. Two matches in a bit of a staring contest here in the corner, but guess what? The Inferno have some heals to boot. Ooh, still! Uh, Greetings is winning this one out. Zoeta finally wins the duel of the other cowboy. Comes in to help out. Inferno win this one. Just barely. 
Wow, that that was crazy how long that was going on. But if you're UH, I think you'll take that because you forced the Pulse Bomb out of Pry. That's one less ult they're going to have uh, to be able to continue to hold here. You're going to have the... Demi's going to have another Pulse Bomb to work with. Absolutely insane. Can they make it 4 for 5 or 4 for 4 at this point? I don't know, but Demi... Demi is absolutely uh, ridiculous. Yeah, I'm fairly certain they had three Pulse Bombs in Control Center and stuck two of them. I'm fairly certain is where we're at, so... It would be four for five if this one lands. It is online, ready to go. Recall's already used, so they may want to sit on the outside until that's good to go. Meanwhile, Fro's going to focus their attention on greetings. Keep front line at bay. Sound barrier from UH means they can just rush on in. Inferno, wait until the last moment, drop their own sound barrier and are able to get some damage onto greetings, but still they lose Zoeta in this process. Not able to keep all of UH at bay. Finally, the coalescence is invested. I mean, that one was personal, going directly for the Moira, still going for the Moira. Zeus has said, I'm a better Moira than you, and I will prove it. And just when UH just flips everything, uh, Inferno flips everything on its head with an insane coalescence. Pride now going to have the pulse bomb. Is now UH are the ones on the back foot. However, they are coming up on some key ultimates. The zoning high noon, they'll have a coalescence of their own. So Pride, once again, needs to find gold with this pulse bomb. Goes in. Uh, no. Unfortunately, that is just tin. No gold to be found. Annihilation L, that's a dead eye. That is not a Zodi dead eye. That's gonna do a lot of damage to Nova mid annihilation. And that's gonna be the spell the beginning of the end here for the Inferno. We're going down to final fight. This is going to 99.99. Final fight, and the only ultimate on either side is going to be Demi and his Pulse Bomb. It's been the story of the first map. Can he secure a big pick and give UH the map win? Or will Inferno find a way to fight through and force map number three? Demi has just has these on cooldown. Oh, gets caught out on that one, though. That was a bit of an ego play, trying to just blink right across the gap. But without a Moira, the Inferno might struggle to hold on to this point unless they can find these kills quickly. Nova is able to take down one on the other side. So, way to great advantage. Oh, that shot landed. So, it is so low. In comes Demi with a kill. There's another stick out of Demi. It got Nova low, but they're still on their feet for the moment. Attention turned to the Lucio. Try to eradicate the healing. Succeeds in finding the Lucio, but Zeus is still here with a coalescence. Meanwhile, Squaw's able to find Pride on the outside. So, I think it's just a... A Moira and a Ramatra here from the Inferno trying to hang on, but you've got Demi at your back, and that is all it takes to secure the dub. Bolska, I know UH comes out of this with the victory, but considering, you know, UH is 5-1 and one and fighting for seeding in the playoffs, and ASU is fighting for pride and getting a dub, getting them all the way to 99-99 like that and pushing them to the brink and forcing their players to have to come through with big hero plays, that, that's got to be at least no surprises. We're going to Saravasa once again. Oh, yeah, our colleague Twin Salty out there is just molding at me right now. Uh, he's a fellow <laughs> caster in the Overwatch scene who uh, attends ASU and has been involved with their Overwatch program for some time. Uh, Zervasa, yeah. There you go. One of two. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. My brain just shut off there for a second anyway. Um, it's sort of again, awesome. Like, you're just like, okay, we have two maps to choose from. Like, all right, here's yeah. this map again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think at this point for Inferno, yes, the reverse sweep is still possible, but I think it's just continuing to show, to show strong. I feel these two maps have been very strong showings for them. So they continue to do that. I feel like you, no matter... How the tables turn, how the map goes, you leave this season of NECC with, you know, a good feeling and can build on that for next season. I think that they should still be feeling very positive. Um, even heading into this map three. Nova, Nova has, has been a beast uh, on the Sigma. This Nova Sigma looked really good. Well, the Junker Queen. Going up against University of Houston. Oh, bringing out a very greedy composition. This is 
this is we're gonna kill you quickly and we don't think that you're gonna be able to do anything about it that's yeah, what university I mean, of houston is saying to me right now with this five heroes they're showing us oh i agree they gotta take full advantage of demi with the burst damage they can provide but lobster's down and that's part of the problem with this comp you don't have a lot of protection for your supports it's your dps even your tank are just all in frontline aggression uh, not a whole lot of people. Yeah, I feel like they're going to make me eat my words. I just got a bad feeling about this, Jeff, but I, I'm not... I, I actually like the Junker Queen into the Ramatra, so I'm a little worried about this matchup for UH. I think when Inferno's playing matches extremely well into this composition, UH rolled out, especially with Zona on the Cassidy. Zona, the rest of Inferno taking a lot of poke damage early at the beginning of this fight. Forces a shout out at Nova just to kind of stabilize here. Ratings did use their own cooldown in that, so both tanks retreat to their respective corners for a moment. In that time, Pride is made able to pick up Demi. I think it was just from the front. Oh no, Pride popped in from the left hand side. Nice little off angle flank there from the Inferno. And now they have just broken out into a full on brawl where they've lost their Cassidy. Trying to cut their losses back up to the point, use a coalescence to send Houston Packet. And they're going to force out that Nemesis form once again in the sound barrier. And the South Bear. Yeah, that is a huge investment. A good one from Houston. Might be enough. They do get to the point. I mean, very important on that regard. And they're going to invest more ults. Just pile them on. Make sure that the original investment is not wasted. In for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, that is that is exactly what I was thinking. I mean, you, basically you're trading three for two. So at the end of the day, that wasn't the worst trade you could have made if you're Houston. But this is, as you mentioned, because of how fast these points tick on on uh, Flashpoint, you only really get two fight attempts before the point gets capped. Uh, but one thing I'm looking forward to, Inferno, Rampage, no Kiriko for Houston. This is larger than some of its parts. The two used from the Inferno are the two fastest building ults in the game. Duplicate out of Demi early, and this is double tanks here from University of Houston. Ooh, that cleave did not hit. That was a nice little dance around, and in fact, it's Nova who's like, this is how you use a Joker Queen. Rampage is monstrous. Yeah, it's like I said, they had no Susan to deal with it, and when you're in a Rampage in a meta where you don't have a way to cleanse it, Rampage absolutely tears through your team, and we saw that on full display. I thought maybe that might prompt a switch out of UH, and they don't swap to Kiriko, but they do have Greeting swap over and match this Junker Queen. No other changes. No carry. Demi still in the Echo. Inferno, grab a very important power position here on this objective. If, if they can get control of this, it would be a very strong start. That's what they're looking for. They've got to keep greetings off the objective here longer to make that happen. Ride with a pulse bomb. That could really uh, thwart UH's attempts here. We're going to start to build it indeed. Inferno do grab first cap. Sound barrier on the attempt in from UH is a touch late, but the dead eye. Oh, damn, I runs in the middle of that. Nice shot. Really could disengage out of Inferno in the middle of that fight. And their build percentage the entire time, right? Yeah, and getting that Deadeye pick onto Demi was huge. Now Demi's going to make the swap over to the Sombra. And once again, it, I mean, we'll see how it works. But the Echo, the Sombra... Um... Um, okay, 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 good, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I like the, the they're basically there gonna go, go full mirror now. The, the yeah. life weaver scared me there for a second. <laughs> the, I mean, honestly, the Sombra scared me more. Oh, um, yeah, I don't think that was it, Chief. And fortunately, UH realized that. And there we go. This this is working much better already. I mean, they do have a coalescence to come in with, and it allows them or to escort Dimmy into a pair of kills right out of the gate. 90% gained, however, in a pulse bomb, but dead before they can use it. Yeah, I mean, probably just, I mean, you're just die on point at that at that time, right? Die on point at that point. Yeah. How redundant but, I can be. I mean, what I'm excited for in this next fight is we're basically going to have dueling rampages, and neither team is playing Kiriko, so I feel like the one who gets more aggressive and gets their team in the position to take advantage of it, this is going to be that nail in the coffin. And if Erdo can set this up, they'll look to go up 2-0 on Fergasa. 
Oh, it's a massive rampage to kick it off. And the stick lands as well. Everything is coming up Inferno except the kills. They get one, but that is it. Somehow, you make sure you're able to circle around and survive through that incredible combo. Wow, that just took my breath away. U8 coming through clutch once again as they're going to get one more attempt at this. There's not really much to work with on either side of the team. If we get into a long scrappy fight, we might get support ultimates up and maybe these Cassidy ults. I was going to make the way into the front door first. That is a dangerous proposition. Ooh. They actually, actually get through and kind of flip the script on greetings. Around, chase down the Cassidy squad. He's gone. Inferno. It took him a couple tries, but they're able to come back and... I think I'm gonna steal this one array. Listen, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Inferno. I want them to at least get a map here. Like the, the way they've been playing UH this entire night, they deserve to at least take a map away and it make our buddy Twin Salty a very happy man. But uh, they still got to bring this home. UH is, it's not over. You got to make sure you play this well and not allow, you know, some new built confidence you just got. Make you slip up. Is that both dead eyes simultaneously? <laughs> the, the echo on the dead eye. Uh, despite the early coalescence and sound um, barrier, um, uh, UH are up in this fight, using the second coalescence to move in and clean up the three remaining members. I'm sorry, ASU, but that was not it, Chief. They were down two in that fight, and uh, they used sound barrier in a five v three. Not, not a big fan of that. Um. And now you're not going to have that for any kind of re-engagement. Really, we're going to get a battle of these pulse bombs. However, Nova is leading by a decent amount in this rampage charge. So that could make a difference with Inferno trying to re-engage. Early pick from Pride. Start. Woo! And gets the stick but dies. And Dino Launcher is able to fade out. Uh, Nova comes through and finishes off what Pride had started. Nova, indeed. Oh, that was a nice knife. The combat roll to pull them backwards, but still they get set back to spawn. Inferno on track here. Close out this map. Yeah, they are in a prime position. They're going to have to get a really gnarly rampage out of Nova in this next fight to really push UH back because if this becomes a long, sustained fight, you'll get advantage of this rampage. They're building up to ultimates, and they could ride this and flip this map on its head. You need to close this out right now if you're Inferno. Don't give UH a chance. Well, the rampage is good. It's going to pick up too. Greetings is still looking for any kind of way to survive. There is none. Could not find any safety. Cannot find cover. Only good news for Jesus on that one is it was fast. It was fast. And that's kind of why I mentioned they needed to get uh, total value out of the rampage. Because now they've built up to coalescence and high noon. Gives them an opportunity to match UH in this next fight ult wise. Another duel. Pride was able to win it out in the last fight and ended up being instrumental. I mean, that dead eye from Skowalf to start it off. Oh, and the Coalescence can't really get value because it has to wait out the dead eye. Now it's the later dead eye from Inferno off the high ground. Down barrier fading here from Foofy. Everybody hides behind the. the oh my goodness. Everybody hiding. It was just easy pickings for Pride. They're all bunched up in a little bowl. Pride just throws in a pulse and suddenly everybody's won. And I think that's it, Volskog. We have seen it. We have seen it happen. Inferno takes a map, makes this a series, starts the reverse sweep. And man, nothing against Houston, but th this feels good. It feels good if you're an Inferno fan, that's for sure. Uh, it's first ASU squad to get a, a map win on the board tonight. You know, and we're talking about... UH needing to close this out clean, but they just can't. Oh, I agree 100%. And uh, think about this little nugget here for a second, Jeff. Remember when, you know, we're on circuit and the map ends and you're like, man, if they just don't let UH come back in that 3v5, we'd be looking at a 1-1 series. ASU could be up 2-1 on the 5-1 UH right now. Yeah.
It really was just a fluke retake. I mean, a, a, a damn heroic retake. That was, I think it was just Demi and the two supports that were alive when they jump off the top rope at Circuit Royale to contest all five players on the bottom of point A and they win that out. Like, come on. I tell you, if I say you, you've got your two supports and one DPS, you're going to jump off the top ropes of circuit and contest this point A against all five of your opposition. How many times out of 10 do you think you win that, Ray? Maybe one. <laughs> I mean, that is a big maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's a big maybe. Like, I I'm being generous with one. <laughs> well, that's enough but, about the past. Let's talk about the future. Surprisingly... I, I'm just shocked. I mean, we'll see when the bells ring, but Inferno, okay. Yeah, they're going to go Diva. I thought this would have been a perfect prime time position to go Junker Queen, especially matched up against this Ramatra. We saw how well the Junker Queen matched up against it on the last map. Um, I think part of that is the meta of this map. I think more and more teams are starting to value this high ground. Look at that immediately. Nova goes up here. UH takes the stairs to claim it for their own. And it's these two bridges uh, have become the absolute focal point of the majority of team fights. And so D.Va being able to fly up uh, up there and back at will, I think could be a huge advantage here in what the Inferno are counting on to try to take over these power positions. However, Inferno already has the power position on the cart. Yes, UH has the bridge, but are they going to be able to take advantage of having control of the bridge? I was trying to fly up and dislodge him. It just needs way too much. They need to fall on the outside so Inferno can keep all their attention forward on this Ramacha. Don't have to worry about a tracer on the flank. Mortality Field keeping Greetings alive through that onslaught of damage. The bot has moved underneath the bridge, so Greetings is going to drop and, well... Say hello to the ASU squad. Oh, Nova, I don't know if you're going to make it out of that one. That was deep. Yeah, that that was a little overzealous. You're Nova on that D.Va. You're going to get d and that's just going to have to be a reset. You're not going to be able to continue to take this fight with your tank down. And the entirety of UH being there is, I think, Inferno's doing the right thing and backing up and at least forbidding, forfeiting a little bit of space. And that is exactly the right thing to do on push. Uh, I feel like you know, the bot goes these short little micro distances between team fights. Pride with the pulse bomb. And a lot of people, yeah, stuck in a tight room. Might have tried to get him up into the stairwell, but Pride throws it early. Doesn't get anything with it. We're taking up to the high ground. Skawala drops down with the dead eye. Got Zeus at low. Finds that kill. Important start here and the best that UH has looked on this map. Yeah, I mean, but Inferno's already bought themselves 30 meters. You do get Nova, so this is going to be an opportunity for UH to really return the favor and try and gain a lot of distance. Yeah, I mean, I feel like at that point, you might have just tried to cut out if you're Pride or, or die fast. Like, those are your only two options. You're able to die fast, but I think quickly in the blink of an eye, UH is going to match this distance pretty quickly. Yeah, they should tie, if not uh, surpass, the distance on this push. Although, yeah, they're, they're sitting up on the high ground. Uh, Inferno rushes out through the stairwell. He's not able to, to slow them down at all in that regard. Ant Matrix does force ASU back down, and they have to just hang out in this corner. Double damage hitting them from either side they try to emerge from. They decide to go back up to the high ground. Cart did not make it uh, to the same distance that ASU has as Zoanna tried to push forward with the Deadeye using the Rush. But with Transcendence there, UH stand tall. They do not give up this precious space. Luffy finally forced down as Zeusa invests a Katsuna Rush of their own. Yeah, and there's that precious lead we talked about for UH. Really coming back as Greetings finds two. I felt like this one was going the other way. But... I think Novo kind of pushed too far looking for that final kill and it left him vulnerable. Yeah, as immediately they're getting off the Kiriko and they're going to have Zusa go over to the Moira. A lot more burst heals available versus that Kiriko. Are they going to get the, the... Oh man, they get the forward spawns unlocked. It's That's so important on a game mode like push because now if you're Inferno, if you're ever trying to gain any kind of cart distance, you're going to have to win two consecutive fights. Yeah, you've got that 10, 12 second stall already done and out of the way for Houston. Ooh, the stick onto the Deadeye, the Immortality Field to keep it alive and keep the ultimate going. 
Pride eventually punished for that aggressive play. Kowalski just sit up high with Fuvi and continue to rain down damage and hell onto the ASU squad. I feel like we haven't talked about Fufi enough. On the Zinyata, they have been they have been a sniper and just time and time again putting so much pressure onto Pride. Violation at the ready here. There's Nova. Oh, Alright, there he is. Alright, fine. Finally found Skowalov over there. Hiding in the corner. Pops the Annihilation, which does get transcendence out of our Zenyotic Schwardner Foofy. Readings had an Annihilation of their own, and our teams are starting to trade here. It looks like ASU coming out on top, winning the staring contest between our two Ramatras. <laughs> I've actually never seen it called that before, but <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, however, forward spawns already be coming through as we already talked about. They're going to be set up already to take another fight. Is Dinalops who's going to have this amplification matrix online? Um, again, you know, coalescence, pulse bomb. Those are great tools to come into this fight, but we haven't seen Pride get a good pulse bomb in a bit. Hopefully, they can stick it this time. There's an amplification matrix. Is the perfect timing, but. They got to make sure to keep Dimmy at bay. They might try to blink up there and get them all bunched up. But didn't want to take the risk. Probably smart. Just going to drop that pulse onto Greetings as they land from the high ground. Greetings is still very low. The immortality field has already been used. They're not going to have that. And eventually they are swarmed and deleted. That they are. And there is the forward spawns match. And just like that, Inferno is really back in this. Still four minutes on the clock as UH's backs are starting to get put against the wall, dueling high noons for this next fight. But Demi, who's been the big time pulse bomb sticker in this series, is gonna have one online for this next fight. There was, yeah, Skowalif and Oliver still hanging out back here. Skowalif, Fufi have never left this position. Despite the cart being as far as it is, it, greetings, I think it was greeting Skowalif and Fufi were still hanging out on the bridge. Absolutely insane, and they're able to find the kill on to Nova. I mean, it's a couple follow-up kills, but it feels like it's too little too late as you just need to get out of there for anyone else for the side of Inferno. But now that they have the forward spawns, we're just going to... Basically, this is kind of how push works. Once we're in a position like this, we're going to be seeing a lot of fights just taking place in these mid-ground areas on these two bridges. I'm stunned, AS. You didn't clear that high ground. They just let them sit up there. It's done. Anyway. UH have the pulse bomb to work with. Demi is going to launch it up onto the high ground. Inferno rotating as a five stack all the way up there where the rest of UH is sitting. Meanwhile, Demi is running away with a spoon. As the robot just keeps trading places again, it's just jostling for position in these mid areas uh wants to just hold this bridge which we talked about how important it is on a map like esperanza they're just look we're gonna hold this bridge you're not gonna be able to touch us look at that again foofy forcing the recall out of pride oh and then Jimmy tried to come in and follow up on it knowing pride didn't have their holdouts Annihilation in from Nova up to the high ground. Coalescence used from the Inferno as well, but a Transcendence was keeping him alive through that. Now the Transcendence is faded. Foofy drops down low, and Nova's going to give chase. Punches through the Zenyatta. Here comes the Counter Annihilation out of Greetings. No limits getting in the brunt of that one, but Greetings has 75 health and just stayed in there. Please heal Greetings. Please. They eventually get Greetings topped off and win that fight. Yeah, Dino Lobster was able to pump in those heals and get him healed up. And now uh, UH is going to have an opportunity to try and take back the lead that Inferno was able to grab. High Noon available for both of these Cassidy's. But again, I am looking at Demi, who's going to have this Pulse Bomb in the next fight. Well, I mean, Squall could just sit on the high ground with the High Noon. Uh, Zoanna has to push in and find somewhere to use this High Noon. It's so much more difficult. Um, yeah, Skowalov just has full sight on everybody. Look how much they've divided the team. There's only three players from ASU on the cart. UH knows this, and four of them are moving in. Demi included to land that pulse. Now they're trying to clean up what to remain while Zoanna's getting picked off from the high ground, and ASU are just trying to regroup. Yeah, now that you're down two, you feel like you either get out or you die quickly. You're going to have to give up this lead and look to retake with a high noon of your own. Escawalfi has shown 
up in the final minutes of this map of Esperanza. Finds four in that fight. Ah, uh, UH put ASU in such a difficult situation, forced to contest with only what three people they had there, but that's the lead. They had to give it a try. They had to attempt to stop this cart. Now there's nothing in the bank. Here from nearly either side. So Anna does still hold out of that dead eye. No limits finds a kill. So they get the bot for free here. Yeah, and you're, you're just going to have to back up and look to retake a fight if you're UH. So they're going to continue to hold the bridge here. Yeah. Demi should be back fast. And they're going to have the Ant Matrix to work with as well. Expect that Ant Matrix to come up immediately. Coalescence is online. Oh, I'm sure that the Baptiste is here. Kowalov is going to go down somewhere off screen while Greetings is still fighting for this high ground against Nova. Both on par for Annihilation, so it's going to be an early Nemesis form. Pop, this should just transition right into the ultimate. Greetings, you're going to drop down. Yeah, right into the thick of things. Greetings, fearlessly on top of Inferno. Once No Limits, can't find it. Coalescence from Zeusa is there keeping Nova topped off, who says, hey, look at me. I want the aggro. I have an Annihilation too. Well, Skawafel obliges, kills Nova. Demi finds Zusa as well in this overtime fight. Inferno fought hard. They're able to take a map, but at the end of the day, Houston still reigns supreme. And they take the series three, two, one. And, you know, like we mentioned, who knows what happened with the UCSC match, but they they at least end the season at a nice five and one, six and one, whatever it is. And now they are looking really good in this playoff position. I believe they locked in the second seed with that win at least. What a way to finish our regular season, Ray. What a match. Underdogs punching above their weight class, performing well, top tier school, really making their name. A top tier school that maybe very few people have been keeping an eye on or you know have really made a blip on many people's radar in the collegiate Overwatch scene. But Houston are